Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Who's ready for a brand new year of Holy Spirit adventure? Amen. 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 Five seven eight three twenty twenty three. the year of awake. That's a prophetic declaration we've been given for this year, the year of awakening to righteousness. Why do we have a prophetic declaration? Because we believe when God tells us to speak something out, it's because he always says something before he does something. Amen. God never does anything before he says something first. Amen. And he wants us to take his word in our mouths and speak it out. Hallelujah. To be preachers. You know what it says about Noah? For 120 years he was a preacher of righteousness. A preacher of righteousness. In the midst of a, of, of a culture where the Bible says that it came to a point where the thoughts of men's hearts were only evil Continually, but Noah in that atmosphere, within that culture, in that environment, was a preacher of righteousness. A preacher of God's got a better plan, God's got a better way, God's got a higher way. Amen. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34 says, Awake to righteousness and do not sin, for some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this. To your shame. You know the truth is that the gospel that is Jesus Christ and him crucified. I believe is basically so simple. That many people miss it. They miss it in its simplicity. Because they try and make it so complex and so and so highfalutin and so uh, theologically. Whatever. <laughs> But I'll tell you, you can, you can cross all your theological T's and you can dot all your doctrinal I's and still miss Jesus. Still miss the Holy Spirit. Still miss the reality and the purpose of your being and of your life. You know that, I believe another reality is that our Father in Heaven, and this is, this is for me, this is the Gospel in all of its simplicity. Our Father in Heaven has only ever been looking for people who will simply believe that He wants to bless them. That's it. When you strip it all back, that's it. Adam and Eve, I mean, He created everything. This, this, he created this, this environment for them that was just so laden, so heavy with blessing. <laughs> and He places them there and He says, This is yours now. Just look after it, will you? Take care of it. Tend it, keep it, guard it. But you know, they failed to believe. They, 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 instead, they, they traded that tr- the truth. Of God's abundance for a lie that somehow God was holding out on them. Mm. That somehow God was withholding a part of the blessing from them. I mean, how ridiculous is that? 
But that's the same lie people are still believing. Yeah. I said it to I said it to a couple of guys like a few weeks ago. I said if you just knew for that, let, let's because everybody wants to argue the toss and everybody wants to bring their wee bit in. I said let let's just forget all that. If you guys knew right now just how much God loves you, you'd be running to Him. Yeah. You'd run straight into His arms right now. Yeah. No objections, yeah. <laughs> no delay. You'd just be there. Mm-hmm. And that, that all all through. All through the millennia of, 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 of human history, God has just been looking for people who will simply believe that he wants to bless them. Mm-hmm. Yes. He finds a guy called Abraham. And at last he finds someone who will believe. But not just believe, but go on believing. Yes. Now we know he found Noah. And Noah believed. And then Noah gets out of the ark and goes, you know. <laughs> thank God he found Noah thank God for Noah we're all here today because of Noah his faith, amen yeah. and, his, and, and his, 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 his belief that God would protect him and his family that God would bless him in fact when he came out that God blessed him and his sons and I believe that's where, why Abraham who was who at the time of Abraham by the time Abraham came along, he's living in a culture where they're worshipping the moon. They're so strayed again from, from this God who just wants to bless everybody. They're worshipping this, this thing that shows up at night. Yeah. Most of the month. <laughs> it, starts, it gets full, you're like, whoa, yeah, look at that. Then all of a sudden it starts to disappear again. Yeah. That's the way a lot of people's Christian lives are. One minute they're full, the next minute the whole thing's just starting to disappear again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what when you worship stuff that's temporary. Instead of recognizing that our God is the eternal God. Amen. He's the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity. Whoever only ever, ever wanted to bless people. Hallelujah. I mean, look what was born. Somewhere in eternity in the heart of God was, was birthed this, 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 this idea. Let's, let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness. I mean, it's like, wow, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Let's go for it. Let's bless this guy. Let's, let's, give, him, let's give him dominion in the earth. We'll give him the earth and we'll, we'll fill it with everything that, that's good and then we'll say, come on, you can have This is yours now. See, the scripture says that the heavens are his throne and the earth is his footstool. We come and we worship at his footstool. The earth was created for worship. When you finally get the revelation and the realization and you finally break out of the lie that has bound so many people for so long that then there's only one response to the blessing of God. That's worship. Amen. Only one response. Thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you. You know what worship is? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I'll just throw this in here again, but I mean, I've said this many times, but remember Jacob, I mean, Abraham, right, he, he catches it. We're going to look at Abraham a little bit more in a minute. But, but then just a couple of generations down the road, you've got Jacob, and we know, you know, he was a, you know, a wee bit of a, a kind of a interesting character, if you might call him. <laughs> but uh, but some, then it gets to this point in his life when, 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 when he's, he ends up in this wrestling match. <laughs> but you know, it's like, religion isn't something that just showed up a couple of hundred years ago or last week or whatever, you know. The enemy, it's the enemy's, it's a tool in the enemy's hand to rob you of the revelation, the realization, the reality that all God has ever been looking for in this earth is someone who believes that he wants to bless them. Mm-hmm. And so he's got, we were saying it, worthy, 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 but he's, he's, got, he's got the religious language. He's like, oh, I'm, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. He thinks he's going to get something from God by telling God how unworthy he is. Do you know how prevalent that still is? Mm-hmm. Do you know how many people think that, that there's a back door to God? There's a back door into his presence, a back door into maybe manipulating him into giving you something that you might want. Just pretend that, that, you, that you really do, that you think you're so unworthy. 
Start telling him how unworthy you are. Don't insult God by telling him how unworthy you are. We have one message, and our one message is the message of the cross. Don't ever insult God again by telling him how unworthy you are because he made you worthy. He counted you worthy of dying for you. To make you worthy. We sing that song, don't we? We need, uh, uh, we'll never know how much it cost. I, I, I kind of changed the words. I said we need revelation of how much it cost. We need more revelation of just the, the, the immensity of the, of, of, of the, the cost of, of our salvation, of our redemption, of, of our restoration, our reconciliation with relationship with the Father so that one reason, so that he can bless us. What he's ever, ever wanted to do was to bless us. If people would just catch that one truth, that one simple, simple, simple truth that all God has ever wanted is to find someone who is willing to believe that he wants to bless them, then, man, change your life. Totally and utterly change your life. Jacob had to get beyond that stuff. And he changed his language and he changed his attitude. He changed his direction of his life. He said, hang on a minute. This unworthy stuff isn't working. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I guarantee you, if you change, if your prayers have been these unworthy kind of prayers, if you change your prayer, then I won't let you go until you bless me. You just walk straight into the very throne room of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right into the place where you, God can do what he's always wanted to do, and that's bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. When he finds Abraham, it's like, it's, it's, like, it's, it's like at last, someone who will believe, but not just believe, but go on believing. You know, it says in, in, in Romans, it says that he, that, that he actually had the gospel preached to him. Way, way back then, he, he, God finds this man, Abraham, and says, I'm going to preach the gospel to this guy. Then we have, we have, we have, we have Abraham's descendants, when we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of serial unfaithfulness in this relationship that God has brought these people into. God gives them the law and he thinks, well, maybe with the law, maybe the, you know, well, he knew exactly what the law would do. It would just prove that they could never keep it. He was, he was demonstrating for them, look, you guys haven't got it. But if you just believe that I want to bless you, that will resolve everything. I'm going to give you these laws to contain you for this season and then you, and eventually you're going to come to this, this realisation that we can't keep it, we can't keep the law. And then the greatest demonstration of love that the world could ever witness at the cross when God said, <laughs> Romans, John 3.16 tells God so, and that, that little word so just, man, it's just it's such a massive word, this little two letter, one syllable word that you can't get to the end of. God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whoever would just simply believe in him would have everlasting life. Would not perish. Would not miss their purpose. Not pass their cell by date. But would have everlasting life. Wow. God's demonstrates his love for us at the cross and then he's, he's like he's saying now, now will you believe now will you believe Can you, have you got the message yet just how, how far I'm willing to go the extent I'm willing to go to, in order to bless you that's all I ever wanted to do was to bless you mm-hmm. can you believe that I want to bless you not just some of your life but all of your life not just one part of your life, every part of your life. You know, Jesus said something, he said, when the Holy Spirit comes, and, and, and when he said that, who, what was he talking about? Where was he talking about the Holy Spirit coming to? Well, we know where the Holy Spirit came to. The Holy Spirit came to the church. It came, the, the church was birthed. 
there on the day of Pentecost. As 120 obedient uh, believers gathered together, those who maybe still had a little bit of hope that maybe, yeah, God does really want to bless us. And their desire to be blessed was greater than their fear of, of being fingered as one of his disciples. So the Holy Spirit comes to the church, comes upon the lives of believers. And Jesus said when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to convict the world. Now, religion takes a term like that and twists it. Because somehow or other, religion manages to mistranslate conviction into condemnation. Some people, a lot of people think that conviction and condemnation are synonymous. And yet Jesus very, very clearly said, I have not come to condemn the world. I have come to save the world. Not to condemn, but to save. And, if he, and he, he said, as the Father has sent me, I sent you. And he, so how, how did the church begin to think that they were there to condemn? That so somehow we've been given this, this, this awesome ministry that Jesus was denied. He will convict the world of sin. And I just love the way he did it. Because he could have just said that and then the church would have run with it forever and, and messed it up. But no, he gave his own commentary on it. He will convict the world of sin. And the reason that, 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 that they'll be convicted of sin is because they don't believe in me. And we say in Romans it says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. They will con- he, will, he will convict the world. Where is the Holy Spirit? Where did he come? He came to the church. Where did he come? He came to the life of individual believers. Where is the Holy Spirit right now? He's here. And you. And me. So the world should be convicted by our lives as believers. They should should hang around us and they they should get an idea of what believing sounds like. This is what believing looks like, folks. This is what a life lived in the manifestation of the glory of God looks like. I believe God. Amen. I was singing this morning. You know, that old devil, man, he's a lying devil. He's a stinking, rotten, lying devil. He's a deceiving, lying, stinking, rotten, no good devil. And he's always trying to put one over on you. And I was saying this one, I believe you're my healer. I believe you are all I need. I believe you're my portion. I believe you're more than enough for me. I'm going to keep on believing that. I don't care what it shows. I'm going to keep on believing. I believe you're my healer. I believe you're all I need. Hallelujah. I believe you're my portion. I believe that you're more than enough for me. Jesus said he, the Holy Spirit will convict the world of righteousness. Then he said because they see him no more. So who do they see now? You see us. Where's the Holy Spirit? Who did he come to? He came to the church. Who did he come to? He came to the life of individual believers. They now see us. This is what righteousness sounds like. This is what someone who knows that they're in right relationship with God because of the cross, because of what Jesus did on their behalf, making them worthy, making them righteous. Because God made him a new no sin to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. When you know that, like we've got to, when you wake up to that, awake to that reality, that truth. Religion will hate you. The church will hate, half of the church will hate you. Well, learn to live with that. Just keep believing that the church is going to conform to the standard that you're setting. Not that they're going to pull you back off your position of righteousness back into their sinner camp. Come on. Well, I'm believing for change. Otherwise, I just quit now and give up and go home and have my dinner. I believe change is coming. That the church is going to wake up. Amen. This is the year of awakening to righteousness. The church is finally going to wake up and go, hang on a minute. Whoa. What does God really say about us? 
What has he really commissioned us to do? Can, is this really possible? Of course it is. Hallelujah. This is what righteousness sounds like. This is what righteousness looks like. He, and then he said, he said the one the church, you know, the religious church really loves, he will convict the world of judgment. Yeah, let's give it to them. <laughs> then he said something unbelievably, fantastically good. Because the prince of this world is judged. Because the devil has been judged a loser. He was put to an open shame. He was paraded and said, look, this is, what, this is the guy that's been bugging you, troubling you. Look, he's a loser. He's been defeated. Lord, we'll be up 2010. Go tell my people. End of 2010. Go tell my people they have the authority to say stop. Mm-hmm. Tell my people they have. They're asking me to stop things that I gave them the authority to stop. Right. They're asking me to deal with things that I gave them the authority to deal with. Mm-hmm. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. Jesus speaking. I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. And on all the power of the enemy. So, I mean, I can't get enough of saying this. But so that nothing, 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 zero, zero, nothing, absolutely nada, not, no, come on. <laughs> shall by any means, I mean, this language is, is just, it's just unbelievably, fantastically Brilliant, it really is fun. It's just like over the top. Yeah. Amen. Off the scale. Yeah. Just like, wow. Nothing shall by any means hurt you or harm you. When? When you finally wake up to righteousness and realize that you have been given the authority to say, no, get out of here. I mean, when was the last day you were sitting at home and and, and, and some uh, local uh, uh, criminally inclined person decided that they were going to rob your house and you just sat there on the couch and said, I'm going to come back, whatever you like, just take it, eh, bother. Do you, want, do you need a suitcase? There you go. <laughs> eh? No. See, what's happened is the strong man has been bound. See, Jesus said, nobody can come in <laughs> and rob the strong man unless the strong man's been bound. So, the, 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 we, we've been sitting there going, oh, God, oh, I'm so weak. Oh. Well, I don't know about you, but I feel like that quite often. That's why I don't live by how I feel. And that's why God gave us the antidote for that. He gave us a prescription for that. Dr. Jesus gave us a prescription for that. He said, let the weak say, Oh, I'm so weak. Oh, 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 I'm so unworthy. Oh, no, he said, let the weak say, I am strong. I am strong. So the next time weakness, say, I'm strong. Mm-hmm. Devil's not going to rob me anymore. I'm strong. Amen. I'm strong in the word. I'm strong in the power of his might. I'm strong in the, in the strength that the Holy Spirit has provided me with. Hallelujah. I'm strong in faith. Glory to God. I'm strong. See, the world needs to see that the prince of this world has been judged. The world needs to see the authority of believers who are victorious overcomers. They need need to see this is what victory sounds like. This is what victory looks like. Because that's why the Holy Spirit is here. That's why he came. He came to the church. He came to you and me. So that the world could see what it means to have a relationship with the God who only ever wanted to find someone who would believe that he wanted to bless them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so simple. It's so incredibly simple. The more layers you peel off, the simpler it becomes. Religion wants to add more layers of complexity and difficulty and, and, uh, come on, and, and barriers, put more barriers in your way. And, 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 and the Holy Spirit just comes and just strips them all back. Anyway, allow me to expand here the words of 1 Corinthians 15, verse 34. This is what I call the, the DSEV, the Donnie Stewart Expanded Version. <laughs> verse 34 it says, Awake to righteousness. So here's the expanded version. Just wake up to the reality 
of what it means to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. To the fact that we can now enter and stand in God's presence and without a sense of fear or guilt. I mean, think of all these things that have been applied to our lives. We thought these things would have, would have been taken, were supposed to have been taken away, but we actually had more layers of these things applied to our lives. Right. I said it before, I said, I said, people get born again and then they get raised in an institution called the church. It's like they're, they're immediately removed from the arms of their father, who they've just discovered, and they're raised in this institution called the church. And it's always like, I'm nobody's child. I'm nobody's child. You remember that awful song by Alexander Brothers? It was one of the saddest songs ever. It's just so, oh man. But that was like the anthem of so many believers because it's like, oh. Lifted, air lifted out of the Father's arms, raised in this institution, behind these bars, looking out. Uh, sometimes looking out at the world and thinking, oh man, they've got it so good. Yeah. Want to go back, do what we used to do, jump the fence and get back involved in the other stuff because it seemed a little bit more exciting. We can stand in God's presence without a sense of fear or guilt, or shame, or condemnation, or any other negative emotion. Wake up to that. Time to wake up to that. It says, awake to righteousness and do not sin. Here's the expanded version. Do not fall short any longer of the glory of God. That's why I said it for years. That's our declaration. The glory is here. The glory is here. Oh, we're praying for the glory. I'm not praying for the glory. The glory is here. What I want to see more and more is the glory manifest. When does the glory manifest? When somebody believes that the glory is here. You can, you can do everything in your power to try and get the glory to manifest, but if you don't believe the glory is already here, it ain't going to manifest. How can it if it's not here? Yeah. Have you ever thought about that? It has to be here before it can manifest. Yeah. No, we're trying to get God to give us a wee bit more of his glory. Come on, God. Well, just give us a wee, not a wee fresh outpouring of your glory. Will you? Come on. Be kind. Please. Pray, please. <laughs> pray, pray, please. Can you not see how, how hard I've been working on this? Can you not see how, how I've managed to clean up my act so... I've fasted so much, Lord, that they can now pull me through a keyhole backwards. Can you not see... Have you not seen that? Have you not been watching? You know, seeing all my efforts, all my striving, have you not? Do you not think it's time maybe now that I've earned some blessing from you? Don't fall short of the glory of God anymore. Take God at His word. Begin to actively and aggressively expect, like like Ian said, the kingdom of of of, of, of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Actively and aggressively expect him to. I spoke of this a few years ago, but moving from spiritual apathy to active and aggressive expectancy. It's a whole. That's a major life shift. That is, by the way, that will transform your life. Spiritual apathy just goes. Oh well, I guess this is the way it is. Oh, this must be God's will because this is what's happening. That is absurd. How can any student of God's word, anyone who has a personal relationship with God, who knows that he saved them and, and, and redeemed them and, and gave them a brand new life, ever sit there and think that something, some of the stuff that's going on could possibly be God's will, just because it's happening? Ridiculous. Expect him to confirm his word. Expect him to do what he says. So everybody do what he says by manifesting his glory and his, and his goodness by his grace in everyday situations and every situation and circumstance that we encounter. Expect him to show up and manifest his glory. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because he said he would. It's not pie in the sky. This is not just sitting by wistful thinking. This is not dreaming. Then it says, for some do not have the knowledge of God. 
Do you know there's people all around us who've been denied the knowledge of God, who've been denied the manifestation of his glory simply because we've not been awake to the reality of what it means to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But, you know, because most people are waiting for God to come and do something that he, gave, he already gave us the commission to do. We're thinking, well, when God shows up, it'll all change. God showed up. And he never left. And he's still here. And he said when the Holy Spirit comes, where does he come? He comes to the church. Where does he come in the church? He comes to the lives of individual believers. And he says, when he comes, he will convict the world. When? When we wake up to righteousness and realize who we really are in Christ. When we finally just simply believe that most basic, fundamental, foundational truth that God's just looking for someone that he can bless. Have you ever wondered how some of the people who didn't appear to be the best Christians, didn't appear to always have the best uh, lifestyles, always seemed to be blessed? It almost didn't seem fair sometimes. You know, you would hear someone give a testimony, you think, mm. the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, hallelujah. That person's just telling you that he's trying to tell you something. God's trying to tell you something through that person. That everything that he just got blessed with was absolutely nothing to do with his performance. It was all to do with the grace of God. It was all to do with the cross and what Jesus already made possible for us. Which he opened up heaven. He opened up the resources of heaven. He opened up everything that heaven contains and he said, it's all yours now. Hallelujah. If you'll come and take it. If you'll receive it. I speak this to your shame, Paul says, well, you see, what was Paul's testimony? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed of the good news of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God. The good news, what is the good news? Hey, he did it all. He did everything that needed to be done for every single person that will ever live. He covered every part of your life, spirit, soul and body. He died so that you could be set free from sin and from sickness and from every other manifestation of the curse. He did that. Will you believe that? Because if you believe that, you'll receive the blessing of it. I've put it in simple terms for years. Believe and receive. Doubt and do without. It sounds kind of... Oh, you make statements like that and, and people look down their long theological nose at it and say, well, that's ridiculous. Well, it's not. It's true. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, it might, be, it might be ridiculous, but it's ridiculously true. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. I speak this to your shame. And that's terrible, wasn't it? Uh, there's so many people who are missing out on the goodness of God and the blessing of God because we haven't been telling them. We haven't been living it in front of them. I'm blessed. What's wrong with you? I'm blessed. What do you mean you haven't? Well, I'm blessed. Why are you not afraid of this? I'm blessed. We're bl I'm blessed beyond the curse. Why are you not afraid of COVID? Because what? who's COVID? What, what happened through that stuff was just unbelievably... Diabolically, just off the scale, horrendously bad. It's still going. Still, people are still afraid of it. Still, people are being manipulated by it. People are controlled by it. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just. But hey, we're here to turn the tide. I'm not here to talk about that, man. We can talk about that forever and ever and ever. How bad that is. I'm not here to tell you how good God is. Yeah. Why well, you're not afraid of that? Because tell you, because I'm, I'm in a relationship with my Father in heaven. He's a good God. He, he just wants to bless me and protect me and provide for me. And so why should I be afraid of anything? I'm not afraid of anything, hallelujah. It's the power of God, the salvation, healing and deliverance for everyone who believes. believes. There's that word again, believes. Just simply believe. God wants to bless you. Anyway, over the last while that you've been around, I've been given... Just several examples of how Jesus stripped back the law. You know, he took away, took away thousands of years of law and just ministered the blessing of Abraham. The blessing that's according to the righteousness that is simply and only by faith. Remember Zacchaeus? Man, he, I mean, in his, in his, in his community, he was, he was regarded as a big-time sinner. 
And Jesus says, hey, I'm not going to them Pharisees' house, I'm coming to your house. I'm not going to the religious folks' house, I'm coming to your house. Come down to that tree, Pa. I'm coming to your house today. And everybody's upset. <clears throat> but something happens when Jesus comes to your house. Yeah. Everything changes. And all of a sudden, Jesus is saying, look, this is the son of Abraham. Salvation has come to this guy's house today. Hallelujah. He's been re- and he stripped away all of the law and everything else and said, look, he's blessed. One reason only. The blessing of Abraham. Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 to 14. Remember the woman who had the spirit of infirmity 18 years? Jesus was shocked. He walked into, he walked into what the, the local synagogue, discovers this woman who's been there for 18 years, bent over, can't, just uh, crippled, and, and, and he says, what, what is this? What's going on here? She's a daughter of Abraham. Why, why has she been left in this condition? Has nobody told her that as a daughter of Abraham, the blessing of healing belongs to her? The blessing of physical health and strength belongs to her. All I ever want to do is bring blessing to people and when the people are sick, I want to heal them. When people are bound in sin, I want to set them free. When people are under demonic oppression, I want to release them. Christ has redeemed us. Galatians 3, verse 13 to 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Where did that happen? Well, it cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the, and the reason that he did that was so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The same Spirit that when he comes will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they don't believe. Of righteousness because they don't see him anymore. And of judgment because the prince of this world got a kick in. Hallelujah. Now you need to remember this letter was written to a church in a region. I believe it could have been written to the church in the Isle of Lewis. Church in the highlands and islands of Scotland. No problem. Written to a church in a region where Judaizers were actively working to bring the new covenant believers back under the law. Back under performance mode. They'd just been set free. Romans 10.4, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Just simply believes that Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. We cannot become righteous by our own efforts. It's impossible. That's why Jesus came and became righteousness for us, because it was impossible. It had been proven over and over and over and over again that it was impossible to attain to any level of righteousness by the law. Mm-hmm. Not because the law was weak, but because we were weak. Mm-hmm. Not because the law was bad, but because we were bad, fundamentally. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Anyway, let's move this forward. Hallelujah. You know, something I believe that's really interesting is that, is that Especially those of us who may have been limited by tradition over the years and maybe the Lord's been helping us strip that, some of that stuff away. But, but even although Abraham originally left Ur of the Chaldees along with his father, he only actually made it halfway to his destination while his father was alive. I think we've looked at this, touched on this before, but you know. Because I, I believe, I've, I've seen this over and over and over again. I experienced it some in my own life. I, I've seen it many times in the lives of other people that how their progress is hindered by either family or sometimes even denominational loyalties. And so they can only get so far. Then they, they, hear, they hear the message of the gospel that applies to a certain area of their lives and they go, ooh, 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 ooh. And it's like they'll only get so far until they're willing to abandon all tradition and every allegiance that they have to what has maybe been the, the traditional way of doing things. There, comes, there must come a point in your life where you have to say, I'm going with God. I'm going with what he says. That can cost a lot. So there's going to be a high price attached to that something. Yeah. But you have to make that decision. I am going with what he says. His word will be the final word. Always the final word. Mm-hmm. We have to give ourselves completely to what the Lord has for us in our generation according to his word alone. 
And I think I've said this before, but that's not a, that, that doesn't mean you're dishonouring what's behind. You're we're simply doing what Paul did. And recognising that what's behind is behind. Here we are at the turn of another year. You know, 22 is in the past and it can never be brought from the past into the present. Mm-hmm. We're recognising what's behind is behind and that there's a future to be pressed on into. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, you know that Paul had a, a, the most incredibly wonderful CV if he wanted to stay where he was, if he wanted to be acceptable and successful within the religious systems and, and the establishment of his day, he had the most perfect CV. He was, he was more than qualified. But you know what he did? He basically just ripped it up. Mm-hmm. Stuck it in the bin. You know why? Because he saw that that was only a hindrance to his progress in advancing in the knowledge of his Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, and beginning to share in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his sufferings. I don't want anything to get between me and my Saviour. I don't want anything to get between me and me being everything that he made it possible for me to be. Hallelujah. Amen. Regardless of how (laughs) it looks good on paper, (laughs) regardless of how many doors it might open for me, Regardless of how acceptable it makes me. I think I said this last time, but yesterday is in the tomb and tomorrow is in the womb. Today you're in the room. I'm <laughs> but really what I'm saying is what we do today will determine whether we nurture and protect what is in the womb of tomorrow or whether we abort it. You know it's possible to abort what's in the womb of tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I, I, I've, been, I've been going over studying again through Abraham's journey of faith and, and, and meditating on it. And, and, and I, just yesterday I was thinking about this and I thought, you know, there was a baby in Sarah's womb long before there was a conception. I remember writing a wee book that years ago, back in the 90s, uh, uh, um, it was called Believe, Conceive and Receive. And that, that's what faith does. Faith believes before it conceives. Faith believes and then it conceives and then it receives. But you know that that process can take a lot longer than nine months. <laughs> it certainly did for Abraham and Sarah anyway. And that's, that's why as we've, we've come from 2022 and into 2023 and say, well, Oh, come on, Tony, what really did happen in 2022? Well, it doesn't matter to me what happened in 2022. 2022's gone now. Mm-hmm. Never in 2023. But what if it doesn't happen in 2023? Well, we'll just keep, we'll just keep pressing on. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm believing for great things in 2023. But see, we get 2024 and everybody's going, well, come on, what really went? See, that's, that's, that's the language of unbelief, the language of murmuring, grumbling, complaining. That's window, wilderness language that will end in one thing only, and that's certain death yeah. at the end of... You know, someone said, a, 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 I can't remember what they said. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, it was, a, it was a good one, but I can't remember the whole of it. I can remember part of it, but I can't remember all of it, so there you go. <laughs> okay, yeah, the mom was there, though. I'm almost there. A rut, a rut is it's just a grave with both ends kicked out. That's what it is. There you go. And some people just create a rut. They just go through life, and all they've left, all they leave behind is a rut. Because all that was was just a grave with both of the ends kicked out, and eventually they just mm-hmm. they expired and fell into their grave, their rut. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah! You see, even if everything looks like you're doing things the same, you know, it's, I, I mean, there's an old, there's a phrase, and in fact, I heard somebody quote it again yesterday: doing the same thing and expecting. Different results is the definition of insanity. Well, it's not. No. No. What do you mean it's not? It's not according to the word of God. According to the word of God, hallelujah. You keep doing the same thing by faith. That's not insanity. That's just faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm just going to keep believing God. No, oh, no, you need to change this, change that. I, I, I went through years of that. I, I, was so, I was so manipulable that people said, change this. And I'd say, all oh, right, we'll change this. No, we'll change that. And it's like... Just stupid. Listening to people with that nonsense. There's only one thing we need to do. Let's keep believing God. Keep believing that what God said he'd do is what he would do. 
Anyway, I better move this very quickly forward because, hallelujah. See that? In fact, let me, let me, um, Abraham, Abraham and Sarah, uh, they had to leave Haran, which was, which was where uh, Abraham's father died, and then they had to continue their journey by faith. You know they could have, they could have, was that his father's name, Haran, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, well, they could have, they could have set up Haran Memorial Church. <laughs> Come on. They could have, couldn't they? And they could have just stuck around there. <laughs> you know? But no, they said, no, no, let's go, we need, we hang on a minute. Let's keep moving. Because it says something, it says he was looking for a city with foundations whose builder and maker is God. I believe that Abraham, Abraham who had the gospel preached to him way back then, he had a vision for the church thousands of years before the new covenant was established. And as you study Abraham's life, it's just so incredible how God just consistently spoke and reaffirmed his desire to do one thing in Abraham's life. One thing only. To bless him. That's all he ever said to Abraham. He didn't say, Abraham, you're a piece of work and I've got some things I want to deal with you in your life. and I've just got some issues here that we need to examine. He said, no, Abraham, I just want to bless you. I'm going to bless you, Abraham. Yeah, but no, I'm going to bless you, Abraham. I'm not going to bless you. I'm going to bless your descendants after you. And not only that, I'm going to bless the whole world through your seed. Yeah. And all, 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 all that God required from Abraham was one thing. His faith. That he believed that God wanted to bless him. And the God who said he wanted to bless him could bless him. And would bless him. And so he just, he just kept on believing. Kept acting on God's word. Over and over and over again, God comes back to him and says, Abraham, by the way, I'm going to bless you. And he says, yes, yes, yes. And he just kept on believing that. Mm-hmm. You, get, you get to a point, though, and... and um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But in, 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 ch- in chapter 15 of Genesis, in verse 1, it says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. And it's like, whoa. But listen to what happens. But Abraham said, Lord God. I mean, I love this guy. Now, this is the language of faith. You see, faith doesn't say, yeah, okay. Well, faith says, all right then, okay, what will you give me then? <laughs> you know, I've heard people say this for years, you don't come to God for what you can get, but well, why else would you come to him then? And he's God after all. He's got stuff that we, you and I don't have. Yeah. And not only that, but he's expressed his willingness to share it with us. Yeah. To bless us with it. So why would you not come to God for what you can get? If you want to walk in the blessing of Abraham, you better get your language sorted out. He says, what will you give me? The disciple said, hey, hang on a minute. Jesus, will you teach us how to pray? And he said, well, this is how you pray. Give us today. I mean, let's give God his place. Come on. Man, I, 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 I haven't got language to express who he is and how worthy he is of our praise. I haven't got that language. That's why he gave me tongues. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just go and leave your language, your English and your Gaelic or whatever it is behind and just go for it. Hallelujah. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And by the way, give us today. Because you're the one who's able to give us today our daily bread. What does that include? It includes everything. Salvation, healing and deliverance for spirit, soul and body. What was that woman asking Jesus for? Asking for deliverance for her daughter. He says, well, by the way, this is the children's bread. It's not actually right for me at this moment of time to give the children's bread to the dogs. But what did she have? Well, Jesus said she had faith greater than a lot of the punters that were hanging about and we were pretending to be religious. Crazy. Come on. She says, well, by the way, do the, even the dogs not get to eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table? Hallelujah. 
But I've got good news for you this morning. It's not crumbs that he has for you and me. Because we're seated now at the master's table. And it's a table that's laden down with an abundance of everything. And, and, and he's, got, he's got this living bread, hallelujah, that just covers every part of our lives. And you're allowed to come and ask him for it. And you're allowed to come and ask him for it, expecting to get it. What will you give me, seeing I go childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? What will you give me, since all, all of these big promises you've made to me, and yet it doesn't look like they're actually coming to pass, and it looks like we're going to have to roll in a substitute? And I just, I feel that's, we just need to get to this this morning, and, that's, and then I feel like the Holy Spirit was just quickening this in me yesterday that. There's, pl- there's a lot of people, and maybe, you're, maybe, maybe this is you this morning, there's, there's things, there's promises that God's made to you. And it's, and, and it's like, they've been a little bit delayed in their fulfillment. And, and, and there's part of you that, that thinks, oh man. And the enemy attacks you on that, and he attacks you, on, and he says, well, that's rubbish, God never said that to you, that's just a... Yes, it's your imagination. That's just who do you think you are anyway? And then he starts to fill your head full of nonsense. And, mm-hmm. and I believe that today the Holy Spirit said it. I believe He said this to me. He said, "I want, I want to do something for some people here today that just, just to, to, to reinforce the promises of God in their lives. To know that everything that God has said to you, He's going to do. Mm-hmm. If you'll just keep on believing yes. that God." There's only one desire in your life, and that's to bless you. Then whatever God has said to you, he is going to do it. Amen. Doesn't matter how old you might have got, it doesn't matter how many years it was since God started to speak. I remember when God gave me that. In fact, he reminded me of that this morning, uh, earlier on this morning. Uh, when I, uh, and in fact, when I was driving up out of Dalbeck this morning, he said, do you remember when I gave you the cliff face? I'm like, yeah, I remember that. See, back in 19... Um, End of 1990, it was. 91, end of 91, October 91, and the Lord said to me, I went, got Ben Bragger, so I got my little son David, who was, who was uh, three and a half at the time, and, and I had him in one hand, a guitar in the other hand, and, and, and got to the base of Ben Bragger and said, okay, and the Lord led us to the base and said, straight line from here to the very top, so off we went, boom. And I got to the top, it was a beautiful sunny day, you could see for miles all around, and, and, and I got the guitar out of the case, and we started singing Glory to God in the Highest or something, and the ping, guitar string broke, so we get tuned it with five strings. And, uh, and, and the Lord said, look around you, north, south, east, and west. He said, this is what he said. He said, I'm giving you this land. Go in and possess it. So I'm thinking, oh, well, praise the Lord. I mean, he has got some right, like, oh, here we go, then. that'll be happening next week, then, no problem. <laughs> Let's go do it, David. You're like, come on. Hallelujah. And then you don't, you don't realise when God tells you, says something like that, you, it's like you're on a journey and it's like things don't always come the way you think they're going to come and, and there's, there's layers of, of stuff that need to be un, removed before you get to the reality of what God's actually saying, what he's meaning by what he's saying. Hallelujah. And then years and years and years later, because in fact, when I was on the, on the, on the top of being dragon, I said, I says, well, there's only one place I can't see from up here. He says, where's that? I says, Del Beg, where we live. And he said, this is what he said. He says, that's your hiding place. That's your hiding place. So years and years and years later, in fact, we, and we had the, the cliff face and, and, and the lion's head and, and, and the cleft and the rock, and we always used to think, that's, the, that's, that's, that's like the you know, rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself from you. And, and that, was, that was always the... the the, the kind of, that, that was the, a picture of, of where Moses, you know, went in. Uh, God, God says, I want to, God, show me, your, show, me your, show me your glory. And God says, okay, I'll show you my goodness. And you see, that's the awesome thing, isn't it? Glory and goodness are synonymous. I mean, if we could just get a hold of that. Some of that things would strip away some of the mystery and some of the, some of the stuff that, that prevents us from walking in the fullness of what's already ours. Anyway, so years later, I'm walking down the road in a dark bag and, 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 and down from by Katrina's mother's house and heading to one down. And I look out at the cliff face and, and the Lord says, what do you see? I says, well, I see the, I see the lion's head. And, and he says, what about the cleft and the rock? I says, well, 
It looks like the cleft has changed. He said, well, what has it changed? In what way has it changed? I said, well, it actually now looks like it's in the shape of the islands of Lewis and Harris. Mm -hmm. And he says to me, I brought you here to show you my glory. Yeah. It was, that, was, that was my, what will you give me moment? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what will you give me? Seeing I go childless and the air of my house is... But what, what will you give me since it doesn't look as if what you said was going to happen is happening? Very quickly. <laughs> And he gives you something. And it's like, boom! Wow! But he said, Abraham said, you, you, you've given me no offspring. Indeed, unborn in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. God reaffirms his promise. Then he brought him outside and said, Now look toward heaven and count the stars if you're able to number them. Remember what God had said to him before, I think it's in mm -hmm. chapter 13, to, to look at the, uh, they said he would, he would increase his descendants like the dust, like the sand on the seashore like, and, 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 and like the dust on the earth. And, and it was like, wow. But now he says, now look up. He says, look toward heaven, count the stars if you're able to number them. And he said to them, so shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord. He did what? He believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness. I, I thought about years ago, I thought, well, you know, now he's got a picture when he looks down in doubt. <laughs> you know how sometimes in doubt we'll, we'll take your head down and looks down and, oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> now I, I remember what he said. And, but now he's, now he's, you see, now, now, he's got, now he's got a picture when he looks up and is tempted to question. Do you, you ever look up to God and, and you're tempted to question his timing, his promise, what he's told you he's going to do? Aye, but, just like him. Yeah, what are you, what are you going to do? Aye, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it says in, in James, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Who gives liberally to everyone who asks. Who, who, up, who upbraideth not, it says in the, I believe it says in the King James Version. He doesn't slap you around for asking in my vernacular. He doesn't say, get out of here with your ridiculous questions. He'll always bless you because he only ever wants to bless you. He's only ever looking for someone who is willing to accept and acknowledge and believe that he actually wants to bless them. Hallelujah. So now, see, every time I drive out of Dalbeg, I look back and I was like, whoa, I brought you here to show you my glory. Every time I drive into the village, whoa, I brought you here to show you my glory. Even if it's dark, I know it's there. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. Then he says, I am the Lord who brought you out of all of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? So he said to him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram and a turtle dove. And, and long story short, in fact, it says he brought them all, cut them in two, down the middle. If any, if, in his culture, this was all about blood covenant. If you understand, understood blood covenant, he knew exactly what was happening here. He knew exactly what was going on. And then it says, in verse 11, it says, when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. How many times do the vultures try and come and rob you of the reality of what was accomplished for you on the cross. You need to learn how to drive them away. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life. What are vultures attracted to? Death. death. Every time death comes with its shadow, because that's all death is, you know that? Just a shadow. Why are you afraid of a shadow? Though I pass through the valley of the shadow... I will fear no evil, because who's going to be afraid of a shadow? So every time that shadow comes over, he's like, get out of here! Life, 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 blessing, 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 life, life. I am a blessed life. Then it says, when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham. And behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. And then God begins to speak to him about what's coming. 
and, and, and the future of his descendants, but then he brings them the good news at the end of it all. And then he, he says something really in, 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 incredible in verse 16. He says, in the fourth generation they shall return here, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. You know, there are some things in your life that have not been fulfilled because there are circumstances out with your control. God said that to me years ago. He said, the sin of the Amorites in this island is not complete. I said, what do you mean? He said, that Amorite spirit, I'm all right. Do you not know you need the Holy Spirit? I'm all right. Well, hallelujah. You see, what was happening was God was cutting covenant, and he cut that covenant with himself. Mm-hmm. Abraham had nothing to do with it whatsoever. When did he do that? And he, it was like, this is the way I, I thought about it the other day. Abraham went to sleep and woke up righteous. Even more righteous than he went before he went to sleep. He went to sleep, woke up righteous, included in a covenant that the Lord made with himself. When did we get included in the new covenant? When we were still sinners. When we were, when we were dead. Still asleep in our sin. Totally unaware. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. When we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And then he woke us up. We were born again and we were woken up and we were like, whoa! You only have to believe that. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Can you believe the plan that God has for you? Can you believe that it only ever, it always, only ever includes blessing and nothing else? And all he ever wants us to do is simply believe that he wants to bless us. And all he ever wants us to get out there, the message that he wants us to take to others is God only ever wants to bless you. That's all he's ever wanted to do. Can you believe that? And he gives us this picture of the cross. Hallelujah. Don't ever, oh, don't ever let your, your message be removed from the message of the cross. Always keep the cross at the very centre of everything that you say to people and that you minister to people. Because without the cross, none of it's possible. So at the cross, everything was made possible. At the cross, and every impossibility was changed into possibility. Every negative was turned into a positive. Hallelujah. Where did that happen? At the cross. Hallelujah. When God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, that we might become sons and daughters of God, those who God only ever desires to do one thing for, and that's to bless in. Hallelujah. And the only one way to, dis, to disconnect from that blessing is to simply not believe that he wants to bless us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if I made any sense today or not. I don't know. All I know is that we're here in 2023, and God's heart is the same as God's heart has always been. Hallelujah. And the amount of blessing that we experience in our lives will be simply determined by how much we're willing to believe that statement, that he wants to bless us, that he really does love us, and that he really does want to bless us. Hallelujah. Spiritually, physically, every way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I believe you said to me that you wanted to, to help some people, Lord God, by... by, by by reaffirming your promises in their lives, Lord, by, by just strengthening them. I pray that, Holy Spirit, that right now you would just come, Lord, and, and in each individual life, Lord, you know every one of us where we're at on our journey, Lord, and I pray, Lord, that you would just bring an encouragement, a Holy Spirit encouragement, Lord God, a, a supernatural encouragement to each and every life here today, Lord. Lord, that the journey isn't over. In fact, the journey, journey has hardly begun. Lord, the journey is not going to get more boring, but it's going to get more exciting. Thank you, Lord God, that there's things that we haven't even begun to think or imagine, Lord, who are, that, that, that you have already planned and purposed for us. Thank you, Father. And I, want to, I want to encourage you this morning. I feel that, that if, you need a, if you need a reaffirmation, I believe that God said if you, if, if you want to go and take the bread and the wine, maybe you've done it already, but take it again. I believe that he said to me this morning that he'll meet with you there and, and he'll do something supernatural in your life that will that will re that will strengthen you for, for this year. That, that that your best years are not in the past but they're ahead of you. 
Hallelujah. And he will reaffirm and reestablish you in some of the promises that you maybe have thought have gone, that he spoke, things he spoke over your life. We're talking supernatural now here. I'm, I'm telling you this. This is what he said to me. He said, he said, I want to do something in people's lives. I want to encourage them. I want to strengthen them. And I want to reaffirm my promises in their life to know that none of the promises that I have made to them will fall to the ground if they'll just simply carry on believing that one simple truth that I want to bless them. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So maybe as, as we... As, I mean, well, let's have a song and maybe, maybe you want to go back to the table today and just take that bread and wine again I believe God's going to meet you there I believe that hallelujah because he said it amen hallelujah thank you Lord <laughs> we have